Hello everyone. I'd like to share to you about our identity with God and with Christ. In preparing for the coming of the Lord, we need to be sure of our identity. In the coming days during the tribulation, there will be an identity of those who are of Satan also. But in Christ, we don't just say, oh, I believe in God. I am a Christian. I will go to heaven. It's not that easy. But uh, you need to prove your identity. Because in a relationship, it's not just... It's just a saying, oh, I am related to you and you are related to me. There is a proof. For example, father and mother with the children. There is what they call DNA. To prove that he is your child, there is the blood that, proof, that, that proves that you are related. That's what they apply today because there are many <clears throat> unfaithful fathers who deny that it, it's not their child, but it can be proven through DNA. So DNA is the proof that you are related to your parents by blood. But in the spiritual, there is a proof of our relationship and our identity with God, which we know God already knows who are His. But you must have this identity. Okay? So let me show you our outline. Our identity with Christ. This is no less than the Holy Spirit. Let's start from the beginning because when God created man, he purposely create man to be in his image and his likeness. So I call this identity with God. It is not fake. So there is no fake with God. It's all original and you have to prove it. Hallelujah. This, is, this identity is the breath of life and the Holy Spirit in us. Let's see how it is. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 then God said man was not yet there but God is man was in the mind of God he said let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea the birds of the air over the livestock over all the earth and over all creatures that move along the ground. So this is the plan of God in creating man. To be in his image and in his likeness. That means what is his image? His very character, his very, very attributes and his likeness. What, is, what are the image of God? You know, like father, like son. Now, God implemented this, and it is more detailed in chapter 2. The creation of man is in chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living being. This is, you know, this breath of life. The breath of life is another name of the Holy Spirit. He breathed and man became a living being. So this is actually the start of the connection, strong connection of God and man and man and God. It is interpresence. Interpresence. Ma God practically came in to man and man to God. 
So they are both enjoying the interpresence. This breath of life is another name of the Holy Spirit now. He put his spirit in the man. And that is the connection. You know, in a relationship, no connection, no relation. No communication, no relation, no connection. And this kind of connection is so strong, so intimate. It is a father and son. This is our DNA with God. So this is how God made it originally. And he, that this is our difference with all the animals. God did not make this with the animals, but only to man because he want man to be his son, his child, the object of his love. <clears throat> now, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is the breath of life, another name of the Spirit of God, the giver of life. Please note that the image, ito, please note that there can be no image and likeness of God in man if there is no Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not in man, the characteristic, the image of God cannot come. That's the whole package. So if you have the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit comes into man, there comes the image and likeness of God. So originally, when, man, when God created man, man was good and he put his spirit on man. This was the start. Okay? Now, <clears throat> of course, we know the story when man sinned and disobeyed God, there was separation. Man was cast out from the presence of God from paradise, from Eden, and the Holy Spirit, you look at this, the Holy Spirit left man. There was separation, you know? So this Holy Spirit, the, the, the difference of the DNA of the physical is, it's permanent until death. <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit is very volatile. You can lose it at any time if you're not careful. Just like this, Adam and Eve lost the spirit of God. Man became like the animals who are living in this world, working this cursed ground in order to eat without the spirit of God. So that's what happened to man. So without the spirit of God, there, no connection. And so curse and sufferings and you know, when you're separated from God, just like, just like, uh, can you imagine a husband and wife, if they divorce, the children are the broken pieces. And not only them, there is suffering and there is consequences. More so with separating from God and we lose the Holy Spirit. And we can see that in Adam. Jesus came to restore that connection. Jesus came to restore that. That is why even though he is God, he has to come. And he himself to be a man. Because the first Adam failed, he is now the second Adam. So he came himself to be a man in order to Restore and to start all over again. To reconnect. Right? And so we can see that, of course, we see when he, as he grew up and as he went around, he started teaching, teaching, teaching. We can see that all until finally. But he never, he, he never taught first. Unless he surrendered and he showed to men what man should do in order to connect with God. You cannot serve God without identity if you are not connected. You are not identified, you know, even in offices, even in companies. Authorized personnel only. 
You cannot work there if you are not authorized. The same thing in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> you have to be identified. And Jesus came to implement that. Now, <clears throat> I did not write the whole chapter there, but let us read. I mean the scripture, but let's read. When Jesus came, here comes uh, John the Baptist preaching. And John the Baptist was the only man that was ever born to be filled with the Holy Spirit, even in the mother's, mother's womb. He is a special, especially prepared by God. As, and then he preserved it in order for his preaching to be anointed. He has a strong connection with God, with the Spirit of the Lord. Now, in verse 1, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he. This is he who was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. So, his message was repentance. Why? That is the requirement. Before the Spirit of God comes, before you ever reconnect to God, you have to clean up. So the first message of John the Baptist is clean up, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And here comes Jesus. He has no sin, but he came to demonstrate and to teach what man should do in order to be restored. Back to God in his relationship. So, see, he has no sin. But he, in his teaching, action. He is a man of action. So he went. We can see that. We can jump to uh, verse uh, 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him. Even John said, oh, he discerned that he is the son of God. But he said, I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me? Jesus said, let it be so now. Don't hinder it. Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. And this is the requirement. Jesus being a God, came to show this, even if though he is sinless, he came to show what man needs to do in order to reconnect and to be identified with God again. So let me tell you, brothers and sisters, baptism, repentance and baptism is mandatory. It is a must. It is not a membership to a church. It is Restoring your identification. It is, a, it is a requirement of reconnecting with God. So that the Holy Spirit will come. So let this proffer for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. You've got to be righteous in the sight of God. You, you put yourself right with God. Because man is sinful ever since. Then John consented, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. So you know what? The baptism is burial. It's death. Now I will explain that in the last portion because death is involved in order to prove your identity with God. Death. You have to die. You have to put to death the sinful nature. See? You have to prove the death of the one who died for us. How do you prove that? Repentance. And you have to prove that. <clears throat> At that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice, look at this. The Spirit of God came. After he came out. Same thing with you and me. With everyone who believes. 
and he repents and surrenders his life to God, then the anointing, the Spirit of God that left Adam when he sinned. Now, when you clean up, when you repent, of course, he, he comes back. That's the only time when the Spirit of God will come back when people are repentant. People die from their sinful nature. It is an action to make. Proof of faith. So when you say you're a Christian and you're not baptized, you don't repent. Faith without action is dead. So when Jesus came and did this, the Holy Spirit came. And there is a voice saying in heaven, This is my son, whom I love. In him I am well pleased. Sealed. There is a DNA. The image and likeness of God comes. So here, let's go to the next. Faith and repentance is required. Please take note that if we don't clean up, the Holy Spirit cannot come to us. God hates sin because it is sin that separates us from God. Without faith, it is uh, faith without action is dead. Repentance and baptism is the evidence of faith with action. When you hear the word of God and you don't put it to action, it has no effect on you. The power of the cross has no effect on you. Now, how, do, how are we included in Christ? Ephesians says, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed you were marked in him with a seal. Oh, you see? This is our mark. This is our identity. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of, of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. We have a mark. So, you are included when you are marked with the seal. Just like, you know, I remember the cow. If you have a, a ranch, you know, a cow, here's a seal. You know, don't, these cows are documented, they are sealed. That's why even here in their bodies, they put a seal on them. And that is the identity that that cow belongs to somebody. The same thing with God. We have our identity. We have a mark. What is that mark? The Holy Spirit. How are we included? You also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth. So we have to hear the word of God and then the gospel of your salvation. Having believed now, even if you hear and hear, if you do not believe and put it to action, it does not work. So having believed, which means you have repented, and you put to death the sinful nature, and you repented and buried into baptism, your sinful nature, and you're clean, having believed. And then the Holy Spirit comes. You are marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit. You know what? This guarantee, it is a guarantee. Our inheritance. What is our inheritance? In heaven. In heaven. Hallelujah. Let's read more scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. This is the anointing. This is the seal of ownership again. This is our identity. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 to 20, uh, 21 to 22. Now it is God who makes us and you stand firm. In Christ, he anointed us and set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts 
as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. If you want to be sure and guaranteed entry in heaven, what is to come, uh, you must prove your identity. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's more. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 17. The spirit of sonship is another, another statement. Because there, those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you slave again, slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. You know, just like Jesus, when he was baptized, he came up out of the water. The spirit of sonship came. And by him, because of that, when the spirit of God comes, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. So we can cry, Abba, Father, because we have now a connection. Abba, Father. The spirit himself testify testifies that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, it is not based on your standard. It is not based on what you think and your what you in your standard is say oh i am going to heaven because i believe on the lord you know but if you don't have the spirit of god this is it is the spirit of god that testifies that we are god's children even if you put a big mark there in your body in it, i am a super christian if you don't have the spirit of god it does not work because it is the Spirit of God that testifies, the DNA of God that testifies that we are God's children. He, malayo ka pa lang, you are far off and God also already see, oh, this one, I, this is mine, not Satan's, this is mine, because I have my identity. I, he, he, I, he, is, he, is my, he has my mark. The spirit of sonship. You cannot cheat God. Mm. The lampstand, now we Christians, even if you are so anointed at one time and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it is a warning. It can be taken away if you are not, if you don't repent because human as we are, we are not perfect. We sin unaware or intentionally we sin. If we are tested and we are enticed and we are, uh, you know, tested. But Revelation 2.5 says, Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Because if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove the lampstand from its place. You know that lampstand is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Which means you have no more identity. Okay, next. David feared God from removing his spirit from him. And this is what, you know, David was a man after God's own heart. But you see, when he was sinning, oh, he, he repented so that the Holy Spirit will not be taken off. And you can see that in Psalms chapter 51, verse 11. Because if the Holy Spirit is taken off, oh, you have no identity. Even he was the greatest king. If the Holy Spirit is taken away. That's why his prayer when he's repenting, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. See? 
Okay. Yeah. So it this message is for everybody, for unbelievers to think if they want to be identified with God. Jesus came. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. And he came to show us the way we have to follow. And including us believers, even once you were filled. But be careful not to lose this identity. The difference of the Holy Spirit and the DNA with man is Holy Spirit is very volatile. You have to take good care of it. Mawala man ang lahat, pwede lang ang Holy Spirit. Now, for example, the ten virgins. You know the ten virgins? The wise virgins in Matthew 25, 1 to 13. The foolish ones. Take their lamb. The lamb, if the Bible interprets the Bible, the lamb means, lamb means the word of God. Thy word is a lamb unto my kid. You can read and read the Bible. But if you don't have the oil, which is the anointing, and you have the Holy Spirit, the seal, then no identity. The foolish virgins did not give importance with the seal, with this anointing, with the oil. The wise virgins, oh, took, took oil in jars, in this earthen jar. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. When the bridegroom arrived, ah, they will all wake up. But the foolish one says, oh, give us your oil. Because our lamps are going out. There is a time when there is no more Holy Spirit to share. That's why the while there is time, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is just enough for you. So, there is a time, but today, yeah, you can still pray and you can still ask the Holy Spirit for you. But there is a time that the Holy Spirit, during the time before Jesus comes and then the tribulation, mm -hmm, I tell you, it's a time of suffering. And then, the foolish ones went to go and look for oil for, for that anointing. But the red virgins who are ready, filled, they have this oil, this anointing, this identity, came in, went in with the bridegroom. And the door was shut. And when the other five virgins came back, then they were knocking. And then, you know what Jesus said? I tell you the truth. I don't know you. You evildoers, depart from me. How come Jesus don't know them? No identity. No proof of identity. No seal. Wala silang visa. For example, the passport. Even if you have a passport, if you have no visa, the same thing. No proof of identity. You cannot show your passport or your ID. Physically, our identity with God is the seal of ownership, the spirit of God, the anointing. Now, conclusion, I would like to end this. Take good care of this. In the case of a will, you know, a will is, it denotes inheritance. It's, it is you have to prove your identity. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. I would like to read this as a theme because we're ending in the scripture. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16 says, In the case of a will, will, it, it denotes inheritance. It is necessary to prove. You see, you need to prove. It is not just saying, saying, oh, I am a Christian. I am, 
I have been a member of this church. You know your membership in the church. They also say you cannot be saved if I'm a member of. The, you are not member of our church. That's not what saves your identity. You have to prove your identity. It is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it. Who made it? Jesus Christ. The power of the cross is. You you've got to. Prove the death of the one who made it. Jesus Christ died. That's why the power of the cross is so powerful. But if you don't prove the power of that, how do you prove it? By dying also. Dying to yourself and repentance. And putting to death the sinful nature because that's what Jesus came to die for, our sins. You have to put to death. That's why Jesus came to do it earlier before he died. He said, he said this is, he went and be baptized. He showed repentance first, dying, putting to death the sinful nature and burying it. Now, repentance is proving it is honoring it is honoring the power of the cross because a will is enforced only when somebody has died even jesus died there if you don't believe and you don't die to yourself and you don't acknowledge faith without action is dead it is mandatory to prove. How do you prove the death of Jesus Christ? Is magbago ka na. Repent. So that you clean up and then the Holy Spirit will come. Because it never takes effect while the one who made it is living. Both party in a relationship. You are still alive. Maata ka pa ilang. Hilaw ka pa. You are still enjoying in sin, wallowing in sin. Ah, you are still living in the power. The will is not in effect because you don't have the identity. You have to prove your identity here. That this is, that's why, this is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. What is that blood? It is for forgiveness. It is for remission of sin. When Moses, Moses had proclaimed every commandment of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves together with water, scarlet wool, and bronze of hyssop and sprinkled the scroll in all the people. He said, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in, in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So, that is required. So that the Holy Spirit comes. The proof of our, our identity. So, if you, if we if culminate it, and uh, if we put a conclusion, our identity, our DNA, is the spirit of God. Take care of it. Make, you, make sure you have it. Make sure that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, because without it, You will hear, uh, you will hear God say, I don't know you. You have no, you don't have my mark. You have, you don't have my DNA. You know, Matthew 7, 21 and 22 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. That they say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have, have we not, uh, and, uh, let me read it. Have we not prophesied in your name? 
And in your name, drive out demons? Yeah. In your name. Many will say to him, me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons and perform many miracles. They were filled with the Holy Spirit at one time in their lives. But you know, if you're not careful, you can lose your identity. Especially if you're not careful, you sin, you do something against God. You know, we are not perfect if you don't maintain that repentant heart. So he said, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Why is it that God said, away from me? No identity. You did not do the will of the Father. And did not, you have no DNA. So keep your identity with God. May the Lord bless you all. Hallelujah. Meditate on it. And may the Lord bless you.